In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. So let's say somebody shared this discussion with a family member and the family member saying, all right, this sounds interesting, right? I'm going to buy some. But here's where I'm worried is it's just so volatile. So like, what are your thoughts on the volatility? Because it is. I mean, it, it, I've traded a lot of different things through the years and I can honestly tell you like the volatility on this thing is wild compared to what I think a lot of people are traditionally used to in financial markets. So I'm kind of right. curious to hear some of your thoughts on volatility and how a person should think about that, how they should manage their risk associated with that. Talk to us. I would say first to, to set the context is that Bitcoin is right now the ultimate risk on asset, right? It's got the highest volatility, highest performing asset in history, but it's the ultimate risk on asset because it's competing to be the ultimate risk off asset, right? I'm talking about something harder than gold, right? Gold is historically the number one safe haven of value, the least or the most trust minimized money in the world, right? So Bitcoin's either zero, right? It's either nothing or it's a global reserve asset. So it's somewhere between zero and a hundred plus trillion dollars in value. And the outcome, I think the more you study it, it's pretty binary. Yes. It either does what it's going to do, all of these uh, network effects and incentives we've elaborated on today, they either work or they don't. There's some black swan that just takes Bitcoin out completely. So to go from zero to a hundred plus trillion dollars is a non-linear path. You're never going to just have this straight asset growth. And a core characteristic of markets is that volatility tends to be inverse to market cap, right? Amazon's a great example of this. I think in 2000, 2001 drawdown, Amazon was down 94%, right? It has grown double digits since every year. It's had double digit drawdowns in most of those years. And its total return since that 94% drawdown is like 40,000%. Yeah. Right. And Amazon, too, it accomplished this historic feat by basically dominating a scarce space, which were digital distribution networks which is essentially what Bitcoin's doing. Bitcoin's dominating digital monetary networks, right? It's a necessarily scarce space. So I think it's a pretty apt example. And so you have to just understand that. You're getting into an asset that's 12 years old. It has a $200 billion market cap, competing to have a 100,000 billion plus market cap. So the volatility comes hand in hand with the, the current level of asset maturity, let's say. To add to that, that is a natural function of markets, right? Volatility is a natural function of price discovery in the marketplace. But volatility itself, too, just to make the point, has been super exacerbated by fiat currency supply inflation, right? We saw that in March 2020. The drawdown was faster and sharper than anything on record. Not only are markets more interconnected than ever, information is moving more quickly, but the medium itself has been so debased that each unit has such diluted value that it actually contributes to the volatility of asset prices. So I would not expect, like if you have something against volatility, Bitcoin's not for you, but any intelligent investor will tell you that the answer to volatility is position sizing. Boom, right? yes. You just change your position sizing in your portfolio and that increases or decreases the overall volatility of your portfolio. And that's just, I mean, that's basic investing 101. So there's no such thing as too volatile. It's too volatile for the position. It's too volatile, reduce the position. You know, Plan B's comment, I mean, he said this probably a year ago. He said, even if you had a 1% allocation to this and you had 99% of the rest of your portfolio in cash, you would have had the same performance as the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. Everyone knows the S&P 500 has gone up a lot in nominal terms, in nominal dollar right. terms, not in gold terms. But if you're comparing it in, in nominal dollar terms, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, it's gone up. And if you had 1% allocation into Bitcoin and the rest was just in cash, you would have matched the performance of the S&P 500, which I find fascinating. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below. 